Welcome back to the University of Ottawa Sports Complex. After 20 minutes of play, the McGill Martlets leading the University of Ottawa GGs by a score of one to nothing on the first goal of the season by Amy Soberano. John Bauer, Stuart Bowden with you here at the Sports Complex. Today it's time now to go around the CIS in our weekly uh, look at CIS women's ice hockey. And Stuart, this past week, a couple of uh, upsets and near upsets. And let's begin with the Manitoba Bisons losing to the 10th-ranked Saskatchewan Huskies uh, on Friday evening. It was a game that uh, a hat-trick by Brianna George is the difference in the hockey game as Saskatchewan may have just given Alberta the conference championship in the regular season. Yeah, we had talked last week, John, about how Manitoba and Alberta don't meet until the end of their uh, regular season. And with a, a shocking loss like that, that puts Manitoba down three games. They're going to have to hope somebody else beats Alberta along the way, which we can't really see happening. And then they'd have to sweep Alberta in that final matchup. Manitoba has two games at hand that they will make up over the coming weeks uh, during one of Alberta's bye weekends. But still, it is going to make things very tough. And Alberta... Uh, looks to avenge last season's upset at the hands of the Manitoba Bisons in the Canada West uh, Championship Series. Taking a look at Ontario, yesterday afternoon, the University of Toronto Varsity Blues have been slowly climbing through the ranks in the OUA, but they ran into almost a major road bump in the UOIT Ridgebacks. You may be going, the who? They're a third-year team in the CIS, and they're still sitting in the bottom half of the standings in the OUA, but they're closing in on a playoff berth in the OUA. The Ridgebacks are based out of uh, Oshawa, Ontario. They're the university side of Durham College. Uh, If you're from Ontario, obviously you've heard of Durham College, but the Ridgebacks forced Toronto to overtime yesterday before the City Blues win 6-5 in OT. Cause for concern for Karen Hughes and her team? Well, like you said, they've been an up-and-down team uh, all year. We really can't get a read on, on what they're going to be doing. But uh, we saw the Ridgebacks here in exhibition play against the Gigi's, and they're, they're a young team. They're coming along. They're under Karen Nystrom now. And, uh, you know, that's a, a stepping stone for them. They've, they've really picked up. You know, they only had a couple wins their first couple of years, and this year they're really making big strides. Saying in, in, in the OUA, let's talk about our former team, the Windsor Lancers, uh, who seem to have hit that uh, the wall here in the second half of the season. Yeah, they started off real well, and uh, now they're really struggling. They're having a tough time uh, putting the puck in the net. They've got Jamie Tessier in that, who always gives you a shot to win, but uh, they, they got to start finding some offense from different sources and able to, to get back in this. And it's a, those bottom couple spots are real close. You have a good weekend. You can jump over a couple teams. Let's take a look at the AUS right now. You've got Moncton and St. FX in the top ten. Does St. FX merit a spot in the CIS top ten? Well, they, they've traditionally been there. They're, they're a good pro- program under Dave Sinition. They're, they're hosting the Ashlands again. But we haven't seen them play anybody this year that's justified them being up as high as they are. You know, they don't have to battle, you know, the McGills or anything like that. It's them and Moncton out there. So it'll be interesting once we get to a national championship to see, you know, where they're really going to end up. It's interesting. The CIS blog each week. Uh, goes and ranks the various top tens on a standard ranking system based upon who they've played. And they keep saying that we're not really sure that we want to put all five Quebec schools in the top ten be- just because McGill and Montreal's there. But the Ottawa GGs, who are down one nothing to McGill here at the sports complex this afternoon, they're 4-1 and one in their last five CIS regular season and non-conference games, but they're 2-1 and one against top ten teams in beating, uh, shutting out Saskatchewan, who upset Manitoba, earlier this week and their win last night over Montreal. Should the Ottawa GGs, even though they have a losing record, start getting consideration for the top ten? I think they'll start getting uh, consideration, but it's going to be tough, especially this week, to bump somebody out with with Saskatchewan's win. I've always argued that Saskatchewan didn't belong there, especially when you look at who the OUA teams you know, have to play. I'd rather see four OUA teams in there than than Saskatchewan, but you can't just you can't take them out now with that win over Manitoba. Well, that has been the week that was in the CIS, and next Sunday afternoon we will do it again as the Ottawa GGs take on the Carleton Ravens at the uh, uh, Ice House at Carleton University. That's our next broadcast here on the network, and we will have our next installment of Around the CIS. It's one nothing McGill after 20 minutes of play. When we come back, second period action from the U of Ottawa. You're watching CIS Hockey Tonight on SSN.